What up? G'day and welcome. I'm Michael. And I'm Janet. And this week we're going to talk about Never Too Late. On a recent plane trip, we watched a movie called Phantom of the Open based on the true story of an endearing and incredibly humble character. It was an awesome movie, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fantastic. Mature aged, beginner and most definitely an amateur golfer, Morris Flitcroft, who against all odds appeared in the British Open, not just once, but six times. And in the first round, he shoots the highest score ever in the history of the Open. And in fact, he sets a record and hits the highest score ever in a professional tournament. I don't want to give away any more of the plot line, except that you don't have to know or love golf to really enjoy it. It's a great movie. It's humorous, heartwarming, and really inspirational. Watch yeah. it if you get a chance. I think it's currently streaming on Netflix, yeah? Mm, yeah. Anyway, on to Never Too Late. It was when reading the precy of the film that three words really jumped out at me, and those three words were late in life. Late in life... This referred to Morris, our uh, humble golfer, who at the time of his incredible feat was 46 years old. Wow, I thought 46 is considered late. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, we must be ancient. <laughs> I thought ideally and hopefully for most of us that 46 would have been considered around a midpoint. Mm -hmm. How often do you hear people say, if only I was younger, I'd have learned an instrument or written a book? or taken a course, or learnt another language, or taken up dancing, painted a picture, performed in a stage show. Dream after lost dream, and you hear, you, know, you hear them lament about it. Well, if you have any unrequited dreams, listen up, because we're here to tell you it is never, ever too late. We live in an unprecedented time for anyone to access the tools and the guidance they need to learn anything their hearts desire. There are online courses and tutorials on just about anything mm. you can imagine. A lot of them are free, some for very minimal cost. Libraries and community centres run courses and programs for free, some of them, or really low fees. So there goes the physical excuses of lack of money or distance or the lack of a skill set or the correct education. You can learn anything at any age. So with the physical excuse taken care of, then what stops most people realising their dreams? Well, you know what? Funnily enough, it's fear. It's fear of failure, fear of success, and of course, OPOs, other people's opinions, which we're going to cover in depth in an upcoming episode. And fear of either failure or success sets the stun gun on most of us. The what if scenarios start playing in your mind. What if I make a fool of myself? What if it's too hard? What if I can't learn? Or the fear of success? What if I can do this or that or the other? What then? The fear of the unknown if you were to succeed is real and it stops so many of us from even starting to begin to realize our dreams. The fear factor is crippling and it has most of us scurrying back to our comfort zones where there's no change or growth and really no effort required. So the simple thing is to do nothing because you can't fail if you don't try, yeah, right? Exactly right. So we tend to push our dreams aside and down and stay safely hidden inside that safe and comfortable comfort zone. The age excuse card comes in handy here as mm -hmm. people can just say to themselves, I'm too old to even try to do this or that. And yes, if you're on the other side of, say, 40, for pro sports, or some pro sports, that require certain speed, strength, and agility, there may be limitations around playing in, you know, say, you know, the, the English Premier League or the NFL or the AFL, wherever you are in the world. However, we'll give you some examples a bit later that show you the incredible strength of human spirit that has broken age barriers beyond belief. Thinking that it's all too hard and that your best years are behind you are common themes. But we really encourage you to stop. Stop with that excuse and get going. The time for you is now, not the 12th of never. Is, is there a dream that you hold in your heart that is unrealized? What about something when you were younger, before life got so busy with a mortgage and kids and working crazy hours? 
was there something that you've buried deep within yourself and that you put in the too hard or not enough time, money, skills shelf? We really encourage you to bring this to the forefront and get started on it now. Now is the best time. Now is always the best time. As we said before, how often do you hear people say, I'm too old for that, or I should have done this when I was younger. It's just too late now. Well, I say baloney to that. It's never too late. And as Janet said earlier, now more than ever, you have so many resources available to you that weren't available to those in the past. And there are countless examples of people who did great things late in life with modest, to no resources and certainly not the tools that we all have available to us now. So really, if you think about it, the time you fail is when you quit on your dreams. So if there's something that you really wanna do, don't let your age stop you. So let's have a look at a few examples of people who did great things in life, Jenny. Absolutely. What about Colonel Sanders mm. from KFC? He had a, a, seven, a seventh grade education and in 1952, at the ripe old age of 62, he opened the first Kentucky Fried Chicken store and history was set in motion. Mm. And then there's one of my favourites, Louise Hay, who began her Hay House publishing empire at the youthful age of 58. Or what about Julia Child, who couldn't cook when she graduated from Smith College. Later in life, she fell in love with French food and started to learn how to cook it and absolutely mastered it. She wrote her first cookbook at the age of 50 and gained a reputation as one of the top French chefs in the world. We have her cookbooks and oh, they're amazing. her recipes are <laughs> sensational. They're tricksy, but they're amazing. <laughs> and then there's Laura Ingalls Wilder, who was in her 40s when she started writing. But it wasn't until she was in her 60s that she wrote The Little House in the Big Woods, which finally gained her popularity. And then over the next 10 years, well into her 70s, she continued writing Little House books. Or what about J.R.R. Tolkien, who was 45 when The Hobbit was first published, but he didn't complete The Lord of the Rings until he was 56. And then there's Catherine Houston, who was a nurse and in her 40s joined a local community theatre group, which she continued to pursue, um, performing in their plays and musicals and things until the age of 60, where she finally got a break and was cast in a role in The West Wing. At 60. So At 60. Folks, it's never too late. But it's not always just about huge commercial success, right? We've got a great mate of ours who's always had a dream of being a painter. And his mid, in his mid-40s, he finally took action on his dream. And over the last 10 years or so, he's created some awesome artwork. He's so talented. Very talented. And he's not doing this for commercial gain at all or to be famous. He's doing it for himself. It was his passion. So he actually took action on it. It was great. And Janet wrote her first children's picture book at 44 and has continued to write another. And then a personal development book, Open Your Mind and Say Ah, and is currently 20,000 words into the third book of an urban fantasy law trilogy. Really looking forward to seeing the final one. Thank you. <laughs> Word at a time. Michael at 57 had his first children's book published. So hang on to your hats with what will come from him next. It goes a bit like, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> I think it's anything you can do, I can do too. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the time excuse? Let's delve into that a bit. So many people along with the age excuse will wheel out from their cupboard of excuses, the time excuse. We often get asked, how do you both work full-time gigs and manage to create so many other projects? this podcast being one of them. The answer to that is that we are all, you, me, Mick, the gatepost, we're all issued with the same amount of time, the same sun rises and sets, wherever, wherever we, we are, are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anywhere in the world we happen to be. It's actually how we use that time. For example, a couple of years back, we were in Fiji on a beautiful little island called Serenity Island. Mm. Google this, folks, if you get a chance. It's amazing. And if you get the chance, go there. It's awesome. We're in a beret on the beach. Oh, the serenity. Mm. Yes, a relaxing island holiday. However, at the time I was working on book two in the urban fantasy series, so each morning after brekkie and a walk, I'd set aside around an hour to complete the daily word count and then reward myself by spending the next few hours underwater in this most snorkeling in this 
just they're just incredibly dazzling reefs all around that island and the multitude of fish species mm. and the colorful coral the warm water Oh. Oh, the serenity. Ah, oh, the serenity. <laughs> and currently we're in the middle of a different island, the Emerald Isle. Island in the beautiful town of Burr. And have spent a couple of hours this afternoon creating this episode for you to enjoy. So while we're on holiday, we're still doing our things and getting, you know, getting our creative pursuits out. Utilising the hours you were given both after your workday and even on holidays, carving out time and to, to GSD, or as we say, get shit done, allows you to make the most of every day of your life. There are loads more examples, but what I'm trying to illustrate here is that none of these people that we talked about before let age be a reason, or should I really say an excuse, for not chasing their dreams. In fact, there is really no limit to the age a person can either realize success or simply follow their dream, whatever it is. Yeah, no, within reality, as we said before. If these people that we just spoke about can do it, so can you. The most important thing is to keep your passion, be determined, and be willing to do whatever it takes. Or in the immortal words of Jim Rohn's ant approach, keep going until. Jim taught this approach to kids about persistence. I actually used to study ants too when I was little, and when I put something in their way, they would keep on searching for another path around the obstacle. How long would they keep searching? Until they found one or died trying. It's a great word, until. And it's a great philosophy, isn't it? You just keep going until you reach your goal, until you reach your destination, until you realize your dream, until you get your break, until. Mm, it's great, it's an awesome philosophy. So we want you to think about what you've always wanted to do and stop procrastinating about it and stop with the excuses. The only thing stopping you is you. So it's time to make the brave step and take some action. You will be so glad that you did. Until next time, love and blessings. See ya. Thanks for watching this video and we hope that you got a lot out of it. We would love it be grateful and appreciative if you would take the time to like this video, comment if you feel inclined, and share with any friends that you think would benefit from this. We are constantly creating new great content, so also remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the awesome material that we have coming up. See you soon. Mm -hmm.